Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Patty. Hello, Joy. Nice to have you with us live. Hello, Louise. Hello to anybody else. <coughs> Hope you're doing all right. Well, long story about my back, Louise. Blimey. I managed to drive into work yesterday, and I taught the drawing class from the classroom. Um, driving in was a bit of an issue. Um, Jackie met me on the petrol station forecourt to, to actually fill the car up because I couldn't get out and I couldn't do anything. I'm... Hello, Susan. I will go as far to say each day is getting, hello Liz, slightly easier in some respects. Hello, Judy. Um, slightly easier in some respects. Um, but when it's slightly easier i think i'm probably overdoing what i can do um and i should be doing a lot less than i'm doing if you know what i mean but i live on my own i can't not do stuff i still need to eat and drink and you know all of this kind of stuff i can't just rest happy new year paul um so yeah it's it it wasn't great. I, I didn't have a good night's sleep last night. Sorry, that's just me lunging for my tea. Hello, Chris. Um, well, in my head I'm feeling all right. It's just it's just the, the futility of not being able to do what I like to do or what I can do. Just putting my socks on takes 10, 15 minutes and, you know... I had lace-up shoes on yesterday, and that was an absolute nightmare and a, and a foolish thing to do. This morning, I was going to go in, because I have two classes on a Thursday, you know. I have a morning class and an afternoon class, and I was planning on going into work to teach from the classroom and get ahead with some packing and orders. So we've had some deliveries and stuff. Not that I can do that, but Jackie comes in and works when I'm teaching the classes, you see. Um... But with minus two and really thick ice on the car and freezing fog, <clears throat> I knew I wouldn't be able to even scrape the, the, the ice off the car windows, um, let alone drive in then in the cold when you're all tense and achy. So I, I've got the old laptop here. I did say in yesterday's class, but the laptop that's on its last legs that could die at any second. Um... Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm not on the usual stuff, you see, Judy. Um, I'm on a more inferior thing to try and give you the same level, but it's, it's really hard to do because I can't bring my laptop to and from work all the time. I can't carry, I can't move, I can't bend. Um, I still have my walking stick so I can get up and out of chairs. Um, so, uh, yeah. It's not ideal, I'm afraid, and I apologise, but it's the only way I can keep your classes going. Um, so you'll have to bear with, I'm afraid. So I've drawn snowdrops, a rough idea of where the snow is, and a very, very faint idea of where the background wood meets the... Um, Good. As long as you can hear me, that's all right. You'll have to you'll have to put up with a bit of a crackle. But also, you've got the ticking of my mantle clock in the dining room on the bookcase, because um, obviously I'm in the dining room. I'm actually sitting down today. I I have had a few classes I've had to teach standing up at the kitchen sink when my back was really bad. So you can see I have an improvement. I mean, I've got like three billion cushions holding me up, but I'm propped on a chair today, which is a huge huge improvement to what has been um god oh bless you louise i well they, they do me just as good i just get you know frustrated that i can't bring you the same quality oh it's only a slipped disc or something patty it's not um i'm just a big baby to be honest i've never known pain like this um and and it's the spasms and the shooting pain and obviously, I, I did it on Friday night. So my house, you can have to, all, while, while you're drawing anyway, obviously you've got until quarter past um, to sketch it out. Um, if you could just say drawn like usual. 
um, then that's fine. Um, but um, so Friday evening, I decided for no particular reason other than I saw lots of people on social media had done it to take the Christmas tree down. It's a real tree. So I boxed up all of the baubles and because uh, I've got because my house is vintage, I've got the, the old vintage baubles from the 40s and 50s. And the really fragile ones put those in tissue and egg boxes and you know all of that kind of stuff and i started getting the thank you louise started getting the um thank you norman uh the secretaires on my real tree because i bag it all up chop up the trunk thank you judy and um use it for keeping me warm in the winter thank you susan um so i, I started i was on my hands and knees for an hour bagging up the the branches i filled two two bin bags well thank you christine uh thank you joy thank you diana um and uh i needed to stand up so i could get to the um branches at the back of the tree and as i stood up my back didn't uh quarter to 11 on a friday night and i was in absolute excruciating pain um there was no pop there was no bang there was no crack there was no snap so i think I think it is just a dislodge. I've got a friend who's a chiropractor. I've got two friends who are chiropractors, funnily enough. Um, and I messaged them at five o'clock on the, on, the, on the Saturday morning after a horrendous night's sleep. I thought I might have just gone had a bit of a spasm. Um, but clearly it's more serious than that. Um, and when I went into the cafe yesterday, they, they were all surprised. Because um, that's open for takeaway. Even though we're closed, we're still going in for online orders and stuff. But uh, the cafe is doing sort of takeaway. They, they were surprised to see me bent over with a stick, walking one foot in front of the other, shuffling like I was 96, um, struggling to get up the step to get into the shop. Um, can't pick, can't move, can't bend. Um, but, you know, it's a slow... I knew, I knew this would be a slow process, and I'm one of the most impatient people I know. Um, so uh, I really should... Uh, I need to slow down a bit. Maybe this is my body's way of telling me I need to slow down. I've told you all I need to, and then I don't. Um, I'm my own worst enemy, really, aren't I? But, you know, each day brings its challenges. Um, and obviously, because I'm having to walk weirdly to be able to walk, the rest of my back and leg muscles are hurting because they're trying to support me doing things that I shouldn't normally be doing. Um but um, I'm having good days and bad days. Um, yesterday morning was quite a good day. I managed to shower for the first time in a week, which is awful because I shower every day. But I was petrified of falling or something um, and not being able to get up or get out or get help. But I felt a bit stronger when I woke up yesterday morning and, I, you know, got in the car, which was a bit of an effort, but I managed. But then I think I overdid it. Um, I paid the price last night. It was really bad, really painful last night. So I was having to really lay on the paracetamol and ibuprofen. But, you know, I've been quite lucky, really. I've never done this before. Um, and I really don't want to do it again. So um, I'm being a lot more careful. I can actually sort of like bend my knees now without being in pain so if i do drop things if i'm very slow i can pick things up can't put my socks on that takes forever um so i have a huge sympathy and empathy for anybody that's got back problems i really have um having never experienced it before it's it's hard to put yourself in someone else's shoes isn't it but uh, now i flip in no i've been swearing like a sailor honestly i said to this morning's class um that uh, thank you patty um you know when you work in primary education as i did for a long time you you really do filter your words and you don't swear and i, I for the, all of the i think the decade i was in primary education i um i never swore even socially didn't swear then you lose your filter once you're out of that environment um but I can tell you, when I have a bad spasm and a shooting pain up my spine, the words 
are quite colourful. I mean, they're all words that you'll have heard before, but I will, I've, I've really got to try. I said this morning, I've got to try and remember that I'm live. Thank you, Paul. Um, <clears throat> and not, uh, and not start uh, turning the air blue with my phrases. But never mind. So I'll be doing some classes from home and some class. Hello, Daphne. It's all right. I'm only waffling. Um, I'll be doing some classes from home um, and some classes from, as long as the laptop works, uh, some classes from the shop. So it depends. If there's loads of online orders, then I'll be in more. If there are fewer online orders or there's no need to make the journey into town, then I won't bother because obviously the shop's not open. Um, and uh, and I, I've cancelled click and collect orders for now a, a because I can't get up and down the stairs quick enough if somebody had collected them and, and obviously Jackie's got the kids at home um, they've been homeschooled so she can't do as many hours either so we're synchronising timing to be in and out of the um, oh I don't think colour is okay Diana not, not the stuff I'm spewing um so yeah it's uh it's a it's a tricky time isn't it and uh locally we've got we've had a massive spike in cases so i'm i don't really want people in the shop whilst we're going through that um anyway because i need to keep jackie and myself uh as safe as we can I can imagine, Louise, you know. I've seen about the sock putter on her as. Um, that's amazing. At the moment, what I've been doing is I've been making them into like a little ball, dropping it on the floor, shoving my toes in, and slowly sliding my foot across the carpet so the friction helps put it on, and then I, and then I can just about grab it. But um, I'm hoping this is not going to be a very long uh, process. Um, I've been warned it can take four weeks. Gosh, I really hope it doesn't because I don't like it. But if I can see improvement every day over four weeks, then fair enough. Um, but I'm presuming, I don't know because I've never done it before, never had it before. I'm presuming that I'm going to have days where I feel really fine. And then I'll have days where I pay the price of feeling really fine. Um, ever the sceptic. The sceptic. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, I've got the colours across the top of the screen. Ultramarine, cadmium red, lemon yellow, burnt sienna. I don't know about Payne's Grey, to be honest. I don't know if I want Payne's Grey, so I haven't put that up the top. But if you've got it to hand, that may work well. Now, obviously... Oh, good. I'm glad your shoulder's a lot better, Daphne. I, I was worried about you. Um, before Christmas, um, I have my one of my close friends. She fell off her horse um, in November, and she broke her collarbone, her scapula, and in, her scapula is broken in three places because um, she fell right off her horse, and uh, most of her bones have healed, but her scapula hasn't. So that's quite sad because she's a dog walker as well as a care worker. Well, I can almost stand upright. The funny thing was, Judy, when I tried to get out of... Getting in and out of bed's hilarious, by the way. Um, if you've ever watched Willy Wonka from the 70s, you know, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory film, there's a scene with Grandpa Joe, and I'll start painting in a second. Um, there's a scene with Grandpa Joe, and he um, wants to join Charlie in the uh, chocolate factory and he's he's in bed all the time he lives in bed and he decides to get out and he's got his um night shirt on and he stumbles out of bed and then as he's singing i've got a golden ticket or whatever and he's stumbling around the room holding on to everything that's how i was and that's how i've been um and saturday morning the night you know the morning after it happened my legs were just all the muscles in my legs were quivering because they were trying to stabilise the back. Um, and I didn't have a walking stick then because they were all downstairs by the front door because I live in the countryside. Um, oh, have you lost sound? 
Thank you, Liz. Have you got sound now? How is sound? Is that you or me? Can you all hear me? Say yes if you can. Because my phone's in another room and I, it's going to take me a minute or two to get it, just to check. I'll wait a second. Can you hear me? Thank you, Liz. That's fine. D, it's probably your internet then. Thank you, D. Thank you, Jackie. Oh, I'm glad you're there as well, Jackie. Good. So, snowdrops are one of my favourite uh, flowers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, they're a special thing for our family. I, w I won't go into the... Thank you, thank you. Um, I can't go into the details. Oh, well, I won't. Not that I can't. But um, we lost a very young family member 20-odd years ago um, in January. So, the flowers... Um, the flowers are these flowers are his his sort of flower my my great nephew and uh, no not my great nephew my nephew um so this is a symbol for our family round about january i reckon it's your internet day um and uh, so every january we all put um end of january early february we always snowdrops as our Facebook profile or whatever to remember him um, so uh, yeah but they're white and our paper is white the snow is sort of white but we don't need to worry about that too much um, but I, these are quite large areas the pep pepples the petals are quite large so I'm hoping we can paint around all of the foliage and I'm kind of going to wet. Now, I'm on a slope here, because if you remember from the first lockdown, I'm on a Victorian school desk, so I've got a, a slope. Dawn, hello! Hello, Bab. Okay. So I'm going to wet from the top down to the main focus snow line because we've got the the crunchy snow that's out of focus in the background but i want to wet that as well um, and i'm going to try and paint around the snowdrops and the leaves i'm using my big squirrel i will probably regret that um, because it holds a lot of water and it also doesn't necessarily let me do detail but fortunately it's it's a little bit chilly in here. I don't think it's crackly when you play it back. Um, because I listened to this morning's class earlier just to check. And it sounded alright. It didn't sound as good as the old one. But I, I actually can't work out... where the sound is coming from i don't know if the sound is set to come from the camera or the sound is set to come from the laptop speakers but the camera is only a cheap webcam that was 20 quid that i bought for emergency use like for now and um, the laptop as you know is on its last legs and about to die so either way it could be from either of those. Um, I could get myself another microphone for doing stuff from home. That could work. Well, you know, I think I've got a microphone. I'm going to try it. Well, I'll experiment anyway. Not today. Not in the middle of class. But I'm sure I did get a USB microphone. Did I? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, right now, which is flower and which is background? That's flower. That's background. 
Don't put pressure on me, you lot. How to do the sparkly snow and all of that malarkey. That's all petal. I think I've painted over some petal now. I can't work it out. Yes, Dawn. Um, Jackie mentioned that the other day, but I'm... Oh, that's petal. Um, I'm really hoping that I only have another week of, of this annoyance. Because it is annoying, and poor Jackie's bearing the brunt all the time because she's, you know, bless her, she picked me up, she, she dropped me some food on Sunday um, round, and she picked me up on Monday to let me get into the shop um, so I could teach a class and pick up a few supplies to bring back with me. Um, she's been a star. You all know she's a star anyway, but no, she's been amazing. Right, so that's quite wet. Now I'm on a slope, so my top bit needs to get a little bit wetter than my bottom. Are you using, are you wetting your squirrel, Joy? You need to wet it a lot. If you've not used a squirrel before, you need to wet it a lot more than you would. Um, because it um, it needs to uh, it needs to soak up as much moisture as possible. So I'm going in with a little bit of burnt sienna. Let's let's shove it on here, and a little bit of ultramarine. I'm not going to mix it thoroughly, and we need to just drop it in. Now that the darker we can do this, the more the flowers are going to stand out so i'm aware that this is going to run more than yours and that is purely because of the slope that i am on i need to go stronger with the color um this is where i was thinking about the burnt sienna the, the paint's gray but i i think i want to try and do it just without if possible now hopefully when you wet around your flowers you'll see that the water only runs where the flowers are And I'm hoping I, I don't make a habit of doing my backing. I know I know it's not something that you can even guess, is it? Because I, you know, I was literally just standing up when it went. My brother messaged me when he phoned me on um, Saturday morning when I did it um, to say that he did his just by getting out of a chair said it's just a sign that you're getting old brother dear I didn't hang up on him I felt like him but I'm not getting old am I I'm just I suppose I'm getting older and I think because I've slowed down a lot I've put loads loads of weight on I can't even do my work trousers up now because um, I've just been eating chocolate because um, I had lots of nice snacky food gifted me for my birthday and Christmas and because I haven't been teaching and there's not been nowhere to go and nothing to do what have I been doing I've just been sitting eating snacks and my waist has been expanding accordingly add a bit more blue and a bit more brown basically we're after a, a sort of mottled background I might add um, more blues into this just on its own I want to be careful because I don't want to I don't want to go too dark either um, in places but I do want some dark bits on other bits so where you want it darker go with a bit more blue The 
skill today is to try and get a decent blend and not make it look like you've just outlined your petals you know Bits, bits of more blue so I've not cleaned my brush I'm just putting the blue in and blue on and even in the snowy section let's add a bit more blue because that's still fairly damp for me the sort of blue grey colour which we've got here as you know with painting it's all about contrast isn't it and for the white to stand out as white behind it needs to not be white it needs to be a subtle grey. Don't forget watercolour is dry. 30% lighter. I know, I know. I'll keep telling you though until you remember. Because you might be able to repeat it by road, but do you actually remember it? That's the thing. Oof, that'll be a bit bright, that phthalo, um, phthalo uh, blue. Very similar co looking colour on the palette though, isn't it, Dee? Easy mistake to make. If you wanted to add a bit of yellow in the background or a bit of green, you could. However, I, I don't know. because it's going to, you don't want to ruin the, the, the feel of the year, you know, in the, it is January, February time, and they seem to be getting earlier and earlier, don't they? If you want to go darker, that's when you could use your Payne's Grey. Just, just be careful with it. And obviously, uh, if I'll use a little bit of it just so you can see. Um, obviously, we're, we're only half an hour in the lesson. Yeah, winter sludge colours, absolutely. I kind of like winter sludge colours. And with Payne's Grey being the blue-black. And it can vary from each manufacturer. Um, still got a little bit of working time, otherwise we'll get cauliflowers. But to be honest... Cauliflowers may not be a bad shout for this. Do you want to make it feel like it's snowing? Should we do that? I haven't got a minute. Let's let's have a play. I'm terrible, aren't I? I'm incorrigible. This paint grey has sort of brought out the colour, you know, the whiteness of the flowers a little more. If you want it to feel like it's snowing on here, okay, we'll do it. You've said it, Diana, we'll do it. Um, if you've got an old toothbrush or a fan brush, wait for it to um, dry a fraction. 
So it needs to go from glossy wet to a sort of more satin eggshell. And then I'm going to use, I've just got a, what have I dropped on the floor? Um, I've just got an old brush here, I don't know if this will work. And then if I wet it, and then spatter, I did have a toothbrush with me on Monday, but I don't know where I put it. This may not work. I think I've got some big bits that are too big. The drier it is, the more controllable the spatters. I might leave it for a sec and um, see how it looks in a minute. quite fun you can see it's starting to work I need it to dry just a little bit and I need to stand up for a sec and God I've not got a hair dryer here it's upstairs and I can't get it plugged in so um, I need it to dry naturally a little bit soggy you see what will happen is the really soggy bits will all sort of like blend into one big cauliflower mess whereas the smaller bit do you know what let me get that monkey toothbrush while i should have um should have brought that with me um when i got up for a walk around the table Any stiff bristle brush works though, but usually, you know, if you like me, I have like a an old toothbrush I keep for art, but I also have one knocking around the house for like doing the grouting and cleaning around the taps and things. It gives a lovely speckled atmosphere. Because you're only using water, I think we did it once. Um, a few of you regulars will know that have been coming for years. Um, we we did it once on a barn owl in flight. I might do it again. It's still taking forever to dry, but that's all right.
We want the flowers to feel delicate as well, don't we? We might do all the blue-grey bits first, including the petals and the snow, and then when that's all dry, we can come in and do... Oh, I've got um, a bit of brown that's run over a petal. We'll see how that goes. But it is still quite, quite wet. I don't. Where I'm sitting, I only have two plug sockets, and um, I've got some a light plugged into one, and a and the laptop plugged into the other. So I can't. I haven't got anywhere to stick. A blower or anything. Um, but it's so lovely to have so many of you with me this evening, this afternoon. Um, Fifteen of you. That's lovely. I think as as we're in this big lockdown, we'll be seeing. We'll be yeah we'll do we'll do something with the sparkles in the snow um don't forget that the white the only white we can get the whitest we can go is the actual um color of the paper so that means that if it anything else has to be darker even if it's a semitone darker um if you, if you print out, you know, um, I don't know if some of you do, um, when I post the reference image uh, on a morning, some of you may um, photo, uh, print out the, the image. It's a really interesting way of doing that because when you do that, you'll see that um, you've got the white paper and it's amazing how much of the actual image isn't white because you've got your white border around the edge so that's really useful this is so wet they're soaking wet as is there this is drying a little bit so i can probably the trouble is the more you spatter the more water you're adding to the painting I always feel it's it's like um, silk painting. Oh, I really need that to let that dry for now. We can start on the on the snowy bottom, but I wanted to do the petrol the petals next, really. See, I'm spoiled. I'm so used in the, used in the classroom to having um, a hairdryer just just to the right of me. But um, I wasn't planning on on working from home often. Um, I wasn't planning on my back um, going wrong, so I'm not really set up. For all of this but hopefully you can see the speckles it softens the image whilst not losing the depth of color around the background which is really useful really really useful ba -ba -ba -dum -bum -bum. It's 
lovely, isn't it, Diana? Um, you could do Judy. Never, you never know. You never know. It could all change in a in a moment. Um, you could do this same effect with rock salt or dishwasher salt, but it's trickier and it it works even less. It's it's a hard skill to master using salt. Um, not impossible, but basically I'll, I'll explain how salt would work on to give you an effect like this. So a grain of salt, rock salt or dishwasher I'm talking because they're bigger grains. The way it works is it will land on the wet paint and it will absorb the colour. Therefore, bleaching out an area where the salt is. Now, this is a tricky bit. If your paint isn't wet enough, there won't be enough fluid or moisture for the salt grain to suck up. However, if your paint is too wet, <clears throat> there's too much for your salt grain to suck up. So what will happen is it will suck up as much as it can until it's full, then it can't do anything. So you often end up with the reverse, where when you rub the salt off afterwards, you'll find there's a dark speckle underneath because all the paint has been sitting there. So you do have to catch it just at the right moment where your painting isn't too wet and where your painting isn't too dry. With the spatter, it will kind of work regardless. Um, but, yeah, it's tricky. Watercolours are tricky, aren't they? We, we know that. But there are little subtle things you can do. Um, now, I wonder if that's dry enough to have a little bit more of a spatter. Everything in my classroom is usually uh, covered um, with stuff. <laughs> Water snowdrops. I'm sure they'll be. I'm sure it will all turn out okay. I'm just using. Um, 300 GSM cold pressed slash not Lankton. That's what I'm using today. It's gone up a lot. It's £12.50 a pad now. But I can use the front and back, which is what I do. Um, I've got an order of Bockingford coming at some point. It's it's a difficult time of year because um, to have a lockdown straight after Christmas um, means all of the factories haven't reopened yet. They open this week or next week and um, we're struggling to get stuff. And there's still, there's still stuff that we can't get in, like graphite powder. And um, because the factories were shut for the first lockdown that manufacturing weren't able to open in the first lockdown. They are now, and they have been subsequently through the November lockdown as well. Um, so they're catching up. Um, but more and more people are taking up art, which is fantastic. But because they're still catch it, playing catch-up from April, May and June, um, there is stuff that they're just... like. Th these are the big guys, like Dale Rowney and, and Windsor and Newton. They're not... Um, they're way behind on manufacturing. I'm going to give it five minutes, although it's actually cup of tea time in a minute. We could look at paint doing a few of the sparkly bits. If I go with my number four round then, I've got a purple, I've got a grey here, a blue grey. I want to add a tiny, tiny bit of cadmium red to that and a little bit more ultramarine. I don't want a purple, but I want a, a nice, um, a nice grey, purple grey, not a pink grey, a purple grey. Oh, yes, that's nice. 
So we've kind of got the light is coming from the right. It's coming diagonally down. So you can see that actually there's a shadow of the flowers being cast on the ice. So this bit of the icy snow is a little bit darker in places. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blob the darker purple grey that we just made and I'm dabbing and then I'm tapping with my finger. So this will hit and miss. We want to remember though that this is not tarmac, it is snowy ice crystallized isn't it so do a little section and have a little tap leave a little gap and this is the darkest bit so what will fortunately happen is that I'm not going to make any more colour on my palette I'm just going to add more water and that will slowly diffuse and lighten the colour so by the time we get to the sunnier side it's going to be a bit lighter as it is in the photograph that's the plan I will do a slight, I'm going to do a little bit of a darker bit over there. You can see how much my uh, paper is cockled. There's a lot of moisture in here. What I might do at, at coffee break time is I've got an air, uh, you know, a floor heater, a, a fan blower thing. I may well plug that in and nick this for a second and just dry it out you want it to feel like snow don't forget this is snow not gravel so it's important to leave more white than you think You could dry brush it, but it won't give you the the crystally texture that you can see in the photograph. So you're better off if you don't want to tap with your finger. And obviously, you know, there is no law that says you have to. Um, you you want to create sort of like shapes, crystal shapes. with your brush so they're sort of wiggly jagged lines and you can go a little bit darker a little bit maybe a little bit more blue um, a bit more icy in there vary your tones add blues because it reflects the light I always find it funny when I do classes like this because obviously the class is about the bluebells but without the, the background you don't get the feel of anything else you could just do the odd blob of brush dabbing ok 
it's a bit of practice, as with everything. As with everything. Look at the reference photos, see where there are darker sections. What you can do, if you accidentally do too much of this, is um, use a white gel pen over the top of it to get some extra sparkles. But you want to leave some of the white. Now mine looks more grey because the light in here is a little bit off. Well, at the window, but because it's such a foggy day, it's that slightly dark, cold light. It is sort of affecting what I'm doing. You can make slightly broader strokes of colour as well. A purpley blue or a very blue wash in areas um, can make it feel a bit more snowy we don't want oodles and oodles of colour but just just enough I think I need to mix up a little bit more because I've gone a bit stingy. A bit more red and I can mix that then with some of that grey up here. Maybe even add just a fraction of Payne's grey. Remember that the light is coming from the upper right hand side so there's going to be darker things on the left of everything. If you've got a lumpy bit that's going to be a bit darker on the left hand side. Obviously we'll see what this looks like as it dries, as to whether I need to add um, more colour or not. I want to add a little bit of the, the bluey dappy dappled bit, dots and dabs in the background, just to encourage the eye to feel like there's a bit more sparkle. I hope none of you are swearing. The texture is quite important because the flowers are going to be delicate, but they're, they're also a bluey grey in terms of of getting the light. You can't get that feeling of light without adding shadow and that's what's quite tricky. But if you look at that reference, look how dark that bottom area is. I 
I'm going to stop, see what it looks like. I'm going to go pop the kettle on. Once we get it. Right. Almost back.
Red Sox finished. Right. Well, it's nearly dry actually. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna nick it so we can heat it up elsewhere. Um it's a lot lighter in real life. I'm just trying to get a a good light on it so you can see more what it looks like. You'll you'll see from the photograph when I post um, what it's like but as it's starting it's not actually getting any darker it's just a dull day out there isn't it I don't think it's changed since sun up this morning um, lovely misty trees that are, even though I don't where, where I live I don't have a garden I have a tiny 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 little courtyard that's about six foot square but all the other fancy houses around me have got massive gardens. The house diagonally opposite has got almost like a forest in their garden. And it's lovely. There's all sorts of different trees and bushes and things. And uh, the, the mistiness of them from sitting here, the big, big cypress, I think, or fir tree right at the back, towers above the others and it's really, really muted. And then each layer slightly darker. It's gorgeous to look at. So we're still going to work with the uh, grey tones. And I'll switch now to... I, mm, I think I'll stay with the number four. And it's remembering that each petal is curved. Okay. And the light is coming that way. So there will be petals casting shadows on other petals. Yeah, it's, it is it's very foggy. And I think my car has finally defrosted itself. Um, probably get back into frost again tomorrow. I want to try and get into the shop tomorrow and teach the class from there and uh, get some orders done with Jackie and order some more stock if we're able to from certain suppliers and then Saturday's calligraphy class I'll do from home and Sunday's watercolour class I'll do from home. Um, so I think if I mix it up um, a little bit we'll be okay. I think there's a rumour there's going to be slightly more enforcement of non-compliance or something over the uh, coming weeks. I think there's an announcement coming 5 o'clock tonight. The rumours are to be believed. Right. I'm going to flit about a little bit. Let me, let me go with, this is the number four round. I think I might need to get another one of these because I've lost my point. First story of my life. I know it's it's very Novemberish or Februaryish, isn't it? This kind of damp, grey day. But it's a it's a shame that I've chosen such a damp, cold picture. Right, there's a hint of the edge of that. So what I'm going to do is I've got that large amount of colour on that. That bit is going to stay a hard edge. This one is going to soften. And then I can do the same with that. Got a slightly white edge. And you want to paint in a sort of striation. Ooh, get me. If you have two of these brushes, you'll find it useful. One to put the colour on. One to um, blend it out. And of course, we know we can go darker at any point. At 
tersebut. A darker just means the same color. less water. So maybe if I use my blendy Don't want to outline as such, but they do need a um, little bit. Oh, do you know what? That's back. That should be background there. Where have I, where have I got that line from then? Right, let me. I need to soften. That light, that's better. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> so I'm putting color on, taking color off, blending color, using the reference image to see where the light is coming from. Some of it I may not blend at all, some of it I might blend. A little bit. Tell you what, I watched the other night because I'm just stuck at home, aren't I? I actually finally caught up with the uh, Call the Midwife Christmas special. It was lovely, wasn't it? Such a lovely program. Without fail, used to make my mum cry every week. It's just a matter of building up the tone. I'm working out which needs to be darker or which needs to be lighter than the colours that you've already got on there. So for me, the shadow needs to be in... in the top flowers the top three if you like needs to be lighter than the background but the shadow in the bottom three needs to be darker than the background um, and that that helps um, but you know no rush it's only ten past three just gonna make more of my purple gray so that's the blue and the red with a little bit of paint grey in there and if I want to dull it down I can add a bit more red or even a bit of burnt sienna right let that dry for a minute then see how it looks I have a 
think it can. I might have to darken a few bits, so that darker colour will prove quite useful soon. Again, we don't know outline. So where, where are you today, John? flower what has it gone into the background joy if if it's gone into the background let it dry and you can use a white gel pen i haven't got one with me here which is quite frustrating um you can use a white gel pen around the edge and then smudge it with your finger into the petal so that'll give you a nice hard outer line and then um a bit of texture inside but what I'm going to do is use this darker gray color just in a few places which mm, sort of outlines and then I'm going to bring it in with a clean damp brush because we've still got the green bits to add and what have you so this is not all is not lost with this picture because once the green bits go on then we can add um, a bit of this shadow color on top of that to be a little bit more purple it's a bit too blue Oh, do you know, I forgot, I forgot the shadow on this petal. What am I thinking? So that's sort of a definite finish line. That's better. Oh, I don't know, none of you say. Again, if you end up going too dark with any of this, don't worry, you can always lift it off with a clean damp brush afterwards, or put a bit of white chalk over the top. Really is okay. Because we don't want it to look like a coloured flower we want it to feel white but with shadow it's always the hard part it's a bit like you know when you, if you're doing white hair or white fur you want it to look 
white but equally you need to paint the shadows and stuff in so it does make a difference but once the green bits are on it'll be okay I'll let that dry So the green will, what what should happen? At the moment, you might think, oh, it's just all grey, it's all, there's not enough white. But what will happen is that what is pure white is going to be green soon. You know, lemony green and bluey green. So the petals that look grey now will look more white once the remaining white paint paper has um, has been eradicated that's the plan you can see now that the cockling is is reduced as the paper is drying naturally And we'll mix in a sec our green and because we want to give the illusion of sunlight we will go with more of a lemony green first, then we can go darker in the darker sections. So that will really help um, make the brain understand that the blue bits that we've put on is shadow, especially if we use some of the same shadow colours. I've just stuck my finger in. Um, over the green in the dark sections. Oh, I see. Sort of what, sort of like how I am here, because um, Banbury's in a valley, a Thames Valley, um, but I'm not. I'm on the high point. On the other side um, we have a totally different weather system to the town center um, here I can have huge blizzards and torrential rain and it's absolutely fine in the town or vice versa it's usually a couple of degrees warmer here as well bizarre 
Right, so let me get my number four round. Get some lemon. It looks green on the screen, but it kind of is a bit green because I haven't got a clean brush. It's not cleaned at all. Because I'm naughty. I'll add a little bit of ultramarine to that. But I want a very lemony green. That would be your internet, Diana, I think. Because I'm watching it live myself. And mine's still in focus. So it, it, it'll come back. It's a quite a lemony green. And I want to paint all of the green stuff. The green that's inside the flowers as well, the patterned area, I am going to do that green as well. In this green and then I'll darken it. But I want to get all the stems and leaves in. This is just a lot of lemon yellow and a little bit of ultramarine. I haven't made enough. Need to mix a bit more. Will I get the same colour? Doubtful. Are my worries? Not really. Switch to my finer brush to do those. There's not much inside that you can see actually. Um, but it does a sort of W shape, I guess. If I do two circles at the bottom. fill it like that as I say this is the lighter color we will we will go darker but we need to let that dry it gives me a chance to stand up and move in fact let's just knock the camera out of the way what have I done now sorry about that Fluorescent. That's going to be interesting then.
I'm definitely not using fluorescent green. Definitely not. Maybe it's just a little bit bright. It is very similar colour match today, so that's not um, that's not too bad. But what I will do is I'll start using some of this shadow colour in with the green, and then looking at where the dark tones are. It's definite, I can promise you it's not fluorescent. I promise. You'll see when I take the photograph how, how, how wrong it is. It's just um, whatever's going on with the colours, isn't it? Neon snowdrops. That'd be exciting. So like with everything else, it's adding the colour and blending the dark the darks in. Might cheat a little with um bit of outlining not much I'm putting the darks in, then I'm going to um, blend a little. I think, because I might go darker still. I'm not sure. Remember, remember, the light is from the upper left. So that means low, upper right, sorry, upper right. Um, so that means the left and the lower left are the dark areas. I'm trying to do lots of little bits so you can see how it uh, should look. But I think I need to go even more with that.
happens with the mix, I think. So you can go as dark as you like, um, or as dark as you think you need to. Just by mixing more colour. So if you mix a very bluey purple, and then add some yellow to it, it might be a better option. But if you struggle with that, use green and then make a dark green and then add a bit of red to it. Or either way, it will work. And then I will soften some of these lines with a clean damp brush. Just a little. But can you see now we've obliterated the, um, the extra bit of white which was where the green is going. Can you see that it's made those flowers that did look very grey much, much whiter? And you can always lift off any colour with a clean damp brush. Just keep working over an area.
and if, again if you want highlights just use a white gel pen and soften it in with a damp brush in exactly the same way Not really a huge amount I can do to this now. It's on quite dark. Let me try and turn that lamp up a little. There we go. I'm just trying to work on slightly darker areas now. Bring it forwards. Push bits back. It's always a fine line as to do you outline or do you not. If you can get your darks and your lights right, you won't need to outline because um, it should do it by itself for you. But there may be sections that I need to lift out a little. Even though it's a light area, a dark area, sorry, I might put some extra lifting out in there. Because it's blending too much into the background. You can lift out any highlights. Clean damp brush. Ah, oh, joy, you say all the right things. Thank you. And I've said this to a lot of you before, haven't I, about trust the process. It's watercolour. You want to try and get that delicacy, but you also need to Get the colour in the right place. Yes, I don't hate this. So that's good. It's a good sign.
really hard not to over fiddle for you fiddlers in the group I bet especially because I'm fiddling and I'm not normally a fiddler I think I'm going to stop there, you know. I've enjoyed that today. Let's have a look what you're doing next week, and I'll tell you what's coming up this week as well. Right, so, to next Thursday. Oh, we're going to be painting puddles. Or see what it looks like in the morning before you decide to do that, Judy. I'm going to paint on the back, if not. Um, so, yeah, painting puddles next week, so that'll be nice. I'll try and find a nice really soggy picture of big puddles on a lane right so coming up tomorrow afternoon we're doing um do you remember doing that vintage couple in paints gray uh, about three months ago where we did all we covered it in paints gray then we um, drew it and then uh, lifted out the color and added the darks that's what they're doing um tomorrow afternoon saturday morning is calligraphy and it's roman capitals Sunday morning is Frosty Dovedale in watercolours. Monday morning's demo is a hay bale with Starfield Galaxy in acrylics. Monday evening is a repeat of this. Tuesday afternoon is the Old Man of Store in the Snow in acrylics. Tuesday evening is Snowdrops in pencil. Wednesday afternoon is the Grand Canyon View in pencil. Thursday morning is a simple flower in watercolour using one brush. So it's how to master your brush techniques. And then that brings us to painting puddles next week. So thank you ever so, ever so much um, for joining me today. It's been lovely to have your company um, for the first Thursday class of the year. Um, I hope you have a good week ahead. I'm sure I'll probably see you uh, before next Thursday online in some form. Don't forget. Our online shop is open for uh, orders and we're not charging for postage or packaging for mainland UK at all. Um, click and collect, not an option at the moment um, because of my back. And hopefully I will see you all very soon. So do take care. Please stay safe. And I will see you all very soon. If not, I'll see you next Thursday, hopefully. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.